Alright guys, so I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of my personal rig. So uh, I've been meaning to do this for a while. Um, I'm actually going to be adding in the custom LED kit I used in the uh, last build blog because it turned out so well and it was so cheap. I thought, hey, might as well. I don't really have LEDs in my case and it looked really good, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in. So while I have the side panel off, I thought I might as well give you guys a tour of my computer. So without further ado, let's get these screws off. Uh, the case is a Thermaltake Versa H23, I think. I'll throw it in an annotation or something. I don't really remember. Okay. And off pops the side panel. There we go. Do you have a good view of that? Okay. So, here is the power supply that I swiped from the last build blog. Um, I have an R9-270X. Uh, underneath my water cooler, HADI, I have a Phenom 955 Black Edition. Uh, I have 8 gigs of mismatched RAM just so I can scavenge in a deal. Um, just run in the middle optical drive. Uh, 120 gig SSD, 500 gig Seagate hard drive, and a 250 gig Samsung hard drive. Uh, this hard drive is exclusively for virtual machines. Um, just, I run a whole bunch of different versions of Windows, right, right up from Windows 95 all the way to Windows 10. Um, honestly, just to say that I do. <laughs> no real functional purpose, but uh, bragging rights. And then this hard drive's for all my Steam games and programs, and that's for my operating system. Um, if I flip it around, you'll see how lazy I was with cable management. You can like almost tell that I tried, and then you can see where I just really didn't. <laughs> Much sums up my controversy, honestly. Okay. So yeah, I just have it matted down enough to get the side panel off. I like tried to tuck some stuff aside, but hey, whatever. Okay, that's. I'll just go back from the pits once it came. Okay, so that is my computer. Oh, motherboard. It's a Asus M4A80 something DT USB three something like that. I don't. I don't know. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, with it I managed to get my CPU up to 4.0 gigahertz uh, from 3.2, which I'm pretty proud of. That took a bit of tinkering, a lot of messing with voltages and whatnot. Um, my 270X overclocks like a brick. Um, I could barely get an extra 30 megahertz on it. I, I'd rather not go messing with the core voltage, because uh, I really can't afford another graphics card if I brick the poor thing. So, uh, yeah. That's my computer. Uh, let's throw some LEDs in it. So let's get this thing open. Uh, it comes with zip ties. I forgot about that. Okay, so this is the control box with a infrared sensor and two leads. These plug into the LED strips, provide power. Or sorry, no. This plugs into your power supply. It's a Molex. And it's got an adapter, plugs into the back of the control box like so. Um, just the fact that you have to route a Molex like somewhere around here where you keep the control box is really annoying, by the way. Um, and we have the remote to control it and all the effects and coloring and the LED strips themselves. Uh, they're held on with 3M adhesive. They, they hold really well, by the way. They stick great. Right, so that is it for that. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, now I have to figure out where I'm actually going to be putting this thing. On the uh, build block where I put the control box was like somewhere around here. I actually just zip tied it down uh, really tight. But it was really awkward if you guys saw in the like panning shots. I had just the Molex adapter hanging out in front of the power supply. It looked really bad, but there was nowhere else I could put it. So I figured, you know, whoever buys it probably isn't going to care too much. It's not even in view of the side panel window, so it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Okay, so I have room to probably do more or less what I did on the build blog, where I put one LED strip along the bottom, like that, and then the other LED strip probably along the top. That might interfere with my water cooler, though. It would probably be fine. I can probably just shift it forward a little bit. So. So I can light up and show off my optical drive. Alright, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to mount it to one of the uh, 
three and a half inch hard drive sleds. I can just get a zip tie through that. There we go. Yeah, I did. Is it from I cut? And I put the zip tie on backwards again. And I'll just run that through. Actually broke. <laughs> oh my god. Look, they just break in half. Mm. Okay. Let's try this again. Let me just get this through. There we go. The uh, included zip ties are garbage. They don't always zip down right, and when they do, they break. So, whatever. I have twist ties hanging around, so I'll just go ahead and use those. So tie that down. I'm not gonna bother doing it too tight, so I don't think this is gonna be moving around a lot. Okay. And now I'm gonna run these cables. Our infrared sensor and our two headers for the LEDs. This hole here, one, two, three. And I'm just gonna throw this in here, like so. Now the reason I'm orienting it that way is so that that ugly Molex adapter can just be tucked away at the back and I won't have to look at it. Alright, so that's the control box in. Uh, let's mount the LED strips. So this is one, and then that's two. Okay, so they're just be interchanged. Alright, so I'm going to mount this one. Peel off that adhesive. There we go. It sticks so well, you really only have one shot at this. This is header one, and you have to match the little arrows. Make sure you're plugging them in the right way. I did read the user manual, by the way. Actually, no, it didn't even come with the user manual. I lied. Huh. I read the back of the box, though. <laughs> okay, and now our second LED strip. Now, we figured out that we can't mount it along the top because there's just too much interference with tubing and honestly my cable management is just atrocious up there and I'd really rather not light that up anyways. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a strip down the side here which will light up the graphics card and the North Bridge and the ASUS logo, all the stuff you want to see anyways. And honestly my side panel window isn't even big enough to include anything up here anyways so there's not really anything to show off. So we're going to peel off that backing as well. And we're going to go ahead and mount this down the side here, starting off oh, with that there. Oh dear. Oh dear, that's slightly too long. Really should have measured that. Whatever, I'll just have it go down a bit in the corner. So anyways, we're going to run that down here. That's the annoying thing, is it actually forces you to use the adapter, because if you look at the other extension, it's a female. You have female to female, so you actually do have to use the extension, which is a little frustrating from a cable management standpoint, but 
Honestly, this is all going to get tucked in a ball and thrown behind the motherboard tray anyways. But I'll go ahead and plug it in just to see if it works. And then I'll worry about cable managing all that. There we go. Okay. So that's the LED streams hooked up. And uh, I'll probably just mount this, the um, infrared sensor for the remote. I'll probably just mount it somewhere up here beside the two and a half inch hard drive cages, somewhere like that because the side panel window covers that, so it'll get a nice reception from the remote. I'll worry about that in a minute though. So now it needs the Molex power adapter, so I'm going to spin this around and probably make a huge mess of all the broken zip ties. Okay. Hey, look at that, nice convenient Molex right there. All right, we'll just plug that in there. I wish everything had just go say it already. Why is that not going in? What is your problem? I think one of the pins is slightly bent. Yes, it is. Okay. So if you ever can't plug something into a Molex, look at the pins, because sometimes they get moved out of alignment. So for God's sakes, make sure your computer's unplugged before you do this. This is a metal screwdriver. Worst case, I think if there is another Molex tucked back there, if that one isn't going to work. And then these are pretty straight already. What is your problem? There we go. Okay, yeah. So there was just one of the pins that was a little bit bent. I'm to straighten it out. Okay. So now this. Because we moved the control box to be oriented this way, we can just plug it back in here, and we never need to look at this adapter ever, ever, ever again. There we go. So that's plugged in. I think I knocked my hard drive sled off its rail. There we go. Oops. Okay. There. So now we have power. Okay, so now I have to mount this thing in place. The red twist tie is going to look really bad, but all the zip ties are breaking. So we're just going to have to tough through it. I should have a counter in the corner of the video for like all the zip ties that break. That would be funny. Except I broke a lot of them off camera, so it wouldn't be that funny. That's like, okay, good enough. Okay. All right, and from here out, it's just cable management. So I'm probably just gonna tuck most of this down at the back and just tie it down along with the rest of the cable management. I'm probably gonna do something up here while I have the uh, side panels off. But uh, yeah, I won't bore you guys with that. So uh, we'll check back in when all the cable management's done, the side panel's on, and we can see how good it looks. Once I tidy up the cables a little bit and I get the side panel back on, that is going to look really good. Alright. So yeah, 15 bucks. Oh, I think I have a bit of dust in the side panel window. Okay, I'll just take that back off and wipe that off real quick. But wow, that looks really nice. Alright. So yeah. That's a uh, tour of my personal rig and a uh, brief like, crash course on installing LEDs. On that note, I'll get this shutting back down and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.